Hey, 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 everybody. They have been talking about how the PlayStation 5 is entering the end of its life cycle, which is crazy because it feels like it just freaking came out. But whenever that happens, it becomes the perfect time to start picking up games from the previous generation. Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. And here are 10 games for the PlayStation 4 that you probably missed out on. Some of these games are already a little hard to find, and some of them you can still grab pretty cheaply right now. Vanillaware is a fantastic video game developer, and they're known for their really amazing art style that really is unparalleled. They just came out with Unicorn Overlord, which I hear is really great. Well, they did not put out this next game. As a matter of fact, this game is basically a ripoff of one of their most famous games, Odin Sphere. And this game is Earth's Dawn. Earth's Dawn is set in a sci-fi universe that's been invaded by aliens, and you are part of this elite squad of humans, the last few left on Earth, and you're trying to fight them back. You level up your character, you find new gear, and the whole system revolves around re-exploring the areas you've already beaten to not only find new pathways and new hidden items and unlock different routes to different areas, but to also over-level if you're anything like me so you can just smash your way through the rest of the game. Now, this game is not as good as Dragon Crown. It's not as good as Odin Sphere, but it hangs in there with them, and it's definitely worth your time. I never saw this game when it initially came out, and the only reason I have it is because I found it at a pawn shop. You might be able to still grab this cheap somewhere, but let me tell you, if if I, RNG Gamer, haven't seen this game out and about except for one time, that game is hard to find. I buy a lot of games, and I do a lot of game hunting, and when I say I haven't seen a game, that doesn't happen very often. Up next, we have a game from Limited Run Games, and I try not to include them in these videos because they can be a little hard to find, but these days they've oversaturated the market that they're basically like any other retailer. You can find their stuff on Amazon. You can find it on eBay. It's usually not that much more than it went for when it originally came out. This is one of the most interesting and unique games I've ever played from them that they've put out. It's one of those quote unquote comfy games. Reminds me of Katamari. And this game is all about friendship. It's about meeting new critters and people, building relationships, and solving puzzles. And that game is Watam. I don't really know how to describe this game in a way to you that will convey just how good it is, but I got the Platinum Trophy in it, and I thought it was a fantastic experience. Even my daughter, who was about six at the time, made fun of me for playing it, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but let me read what the back of the game cover says. Watam is a combination of the Japanese word wa and the Tamil word vatam for circle, okay? Mare is alone in the dark world with no memories, too sad to realize his dear friends are still nearby. However, an unexpected reunion helps him remember the joy of simply grabbing a friend by the hand and running off to adventure together. That's what this game's like. It is full of tons of interesting physics-based puzzles and a lot of really neat things happen. I thought this was a fantastic game. Never hear anybody talk about it, but I think any gamer should try this out. Comfy games are good. They make you feel good, and there's nothing wrong with feeling good. Now, this next game was really a great idea for a game. When Limited Run Games came out, GameStop got a little scared, thought they were infringing on their business model, and they totally were. GameStop had a great idea that they ended up abandoning dumbly. Why don't they just publish their own games that they only sell in their own stores? Which I think is a great idea. I don't know why they didn't do more of these, they just did a handful of them. But the first one they did, they had Insomniac. Creators of Ratchet and Clank make for them. And that game is Song of the Deep. This is a really interesting Metroidvania kind of exploratory submarine game. This girl is searching for her father that disappeared. And like any good Metroidvania, you collect new items, you unlock new areas, and you use the abilities and things you've collected to help you get to areas that were previously unreachable before. Insomniac doesn't usually do indie side-scrolling games, but for some reason, GameStop talked them into making this game. And I think they kind of knocked it out of the water. 
I think if GameStop had stuck with more of these, it would have been a really successful business venture for them. I'm sad to see they abandoned the idea of publishing their own games, because I would have loved to see more games like this. Indie games that had big developers behind them. I think it's really interesting when AAA studios decide to go slumming it and put out some indie small game. They usually turn out pretty fun or at least unique. And this is definitely the case with Song of the Deep. Up next we have a game, I've mentioned it a little bit before on this channel way back when I first started it. And I haven't ever played anything like this, although I've played a bunch of games that kind of dabble with the ideas in this game. And it's the Sexy Brutal. I'm going to do my best to explain this, although it's a very strange game. It's an isometric puzzle game at its heart, but it's about solving a series of murders, and it kind of uses the mechanic from the movie Groundhog Day. You have a time limit to gather clues and manipulate the environments around you to try to prevent a murder. When time runs out, too bad, it rewinds back to the beginning, and you use the knowledge you gained in your previous trip through the area to try to manipulate things and stop a murder from happening. And you go through a series of these before you finally get to the end of the game. But interestingly enough, it takes place in a casino, kind of like the casino at Monte Carlo, that's just huge and full of interesting characters. And all of the murders and stories happen parallel with each other. I believe it all takes place over the course of one night. It's a lot of fun and it's an intriguing premise for a game and it's executed really well. And not only that, it has a banging electro swing soundtrack. You don't get to hear a lot of electro swing in games very often. I loved this game. I thought it was a fantastic experience. I don't see it around much anymore, but the last time I did it was pretty cheap. If you like puzzle games and you like using your noggin a little bit, I would highly recommend this. Up next we have probably my favorite game in the bunch. I think this is a masterpiece of a game. I honestly think it's one of the best games I've ever played in my entire life. You can go out and buy this right now. I see it all the time for sale in game stores. It's cheap as dirt, always below $20. It's narrated by Queen Latifah, so how can you go wrong? It's Sayonara Wild Hearts. This whole game is an allegory that the game creator made to describe what it was like coming out of a deep depression. The character in the game, and I guess the person who created the game, had a bad breakup, they were depressed, and they locked themselves in their room for a time period. And this game is full of different, almost many games, that are metaphorical representations of all the events that happened that brought this developer up out of this depressed state. If you've ever had a time in your life where you struggled with depression or a bad breakup or anxiety or something and you were able to fight your way up out of it, usually there's a catalyst or an event that did it. I know that's the way it's been for me. It's very interesting in Sayonara Wild Hearts, the way that they represented those different events with different types of gameplay, beautiful music, and unbelievable graphics. This is a masterpiece of a game. And when people talk about games as an art form, this is the best example of that I've ever seen. I have nothing bad to say about this game. It's emotionally impactful. It's gorgeous to look at and the presentation is almost perfect in my opinion. And it's still a lot of fun. So if you haven't tried this game, I can't recommend it highly enough. You should be able to find it pretty easily, like I said. Grab it. Up next, we have another game from Limited Run Games. It was the 49th game they ever put out. Never hear anybody mention it. Haven't seen it anywhere since it came out, but I played it and I got the platinum trophy in it in one sitting. It's Mitsurugi Kamui Hakai. So what is this game? Well, this game is a arena-based hack and slash that plays a lot like Devil May Cry with like combos that you can string together but it's just like an arena after an arena after an arena there's not really any areas between the fights so it's like you took Devil May Cry and removed all the exploration and just strung all the combat encounters together. <laughs> but it is a lot of fun. I think the character models and the enemy design are really good for like this kind of level budget indie game, but it just works. It's a really fun game. Like I said, I beat this and platinum it in one sitting. It was challenging, but not too challenging. And it made me feel good about myself because <laughs> I was able to plow through. 
Haven't seen this one anywhere else. I've never seen a single other person that had it. It might be a little hard to find, but I'm sure you can grab a copy out there somewhere. If this looks good to you, and you like Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, those styles of games, this is a good short game that's similar to those. You can't go wrong with it. Now, I can't remember if this got a US release or not, I picked up the Asian release a long time before the US version was announced and I might even just be imagining that it even was announced. This is from a beloved franchise that you've all heard of even though you probably don't know it. This is every game in the series, I think, all on one disc. And yes, English is included on this Asian release. It's Kunio Kun The World Classics Collection. Kunio Kun and his friends are mainstays on the Nintendo Entertainment System. They're the stars of River City Ransom, they're the stars of Super Dodgeball, and tons of other high school-based athletic fighting game releases that never even came out in the United States. This collection has 18 games on it, including all three Double Dragon games, which are kind of semi-spinoffs of the Kunio Kun collection, I guess. They're kind of considering it that for this collection. But they are so much fun. Super Dodgeball and Crash and the Boys Street Challenge and River City Ransom are some of my favorite NES games of all time. And they're included on this collection. I grabbed it for like 20 bucks brand new. Mine's still sealed. All 18 games, I guess, except for the ones I've beaten a million times, are still in my backlog. I'm waiting to get into them so I can crack it open. But some of the best NES games you'll ever play are on here, and there are some that are supposed to be even better than that that never even got US releases. They're included on here. I want to try out the baseball one. I want to try the soccer one really badly. You used to be able to grab this off PlayAsia for just a few bucks. It might still be up there. If you like River City Ransom and Double Dragon and Super Dodgeball and all those games, you need to pick up this collection. Grab it now while you still have the chance to do it. And this next game goes right along with that. I mentioned Super Dodgeball. It's one of my favorite games on the NES. It's a great arcade style dodgeball game. Well, a new game has come out for the PS4 in the last couple years that takes that gameplay and mixes it with an RPG. I haven't played this yet, but people have told me that it's one of their favorite releases that have come out in the last few years. It's Dodgeball Academia. I pretty much explained what it sounds like. You can see the gameplay footage below, but I'll read what it says on the back of the box. In a world, oh, sorry. <clears throat> in a world where dodgeball is life, you join Otto at the academy and train to become the ultimate dodgeball champion. Across eight episodes, you'll forge friendships and create rivals all in the name of building the school's best team. Level up and develop a dynamic team in a vast customizable party progression system. All the while, explore the vast dodgeball academia and cover the long hidden truths that reside in the very walls you live, learn, and dominate in. It's a story-based RPG with dodgeball is the combat. That sounds awesome to me. Does that sound good to you? I loved dodgeball when I was a kid, man. I was really great at it. If you were bad at dodgeball, you might not like this. But I don't think many people out there even played dodgeball in school. I was kind of like at the end of that <laughs> phase. People used to get destroyed, let me tell you. There were tears every single time we had gym class. <laughs> We have a game here from another franchise I never played till I played this one. I enjoyed it a lot, but I will say the trophies in this game are bugged. I beat the game and unlocked most of the trophies and none of them ever popped. If you're not a big trophy hunter, you'll have a good time with this one. If you care about trophies, I don't think they ever patched it. But if you grab it somewhere cheap, it's still a really good time. It's Deception 4 the Nightmare Princess. If you haven't played any of the Deception games, they're really interesting. You play as, I guess, the Nightmare Princess, and you have a castle, and it's being invaded by heroes, and you've got to stop them from stopping you from doing your evil deeds. <laughs> and how do you do that? You set up elaborate Rube Goldberg-themed booby traps. And the goal is have them walk into your trap and goes through a chain reaction where they get hit by the hammer into a trampoline and then they, they land in a brazier full of fire that causes them to run in a direction where a scimitar slashes them into the wall that's covered in spikes. And you rack up these chain combos and you try to deal as much damage as you can. It's almost like a tower defense style game. But I haven't ever played a tower defense game before that had like chained combos together like this. You can create some really insane contraptions. I think it's 
a really cool premise for a game. It can get really challenging. I liked it a lot. I'm bummed the trophies didn't unlock, but I don't regret grabbing this, and I don't regret the time I spent with it. So if this sounds interesting to you, grab this now. I've only seen this once or twice in a gaming store, so it can get a little hard to find. You probably missed it but you should definitely get it. And up next, we have a more adult-themed game. We stuck it at the end of the video because most of the people aren't going to watch this far. If you did, I really appreciate that. If you'd like to see some more of me, consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when the new videos come out, and give me a like. That's the best way to help with the YouTube algorithm. I'd appreciate that. And leave a comment. I answer every single one of them. There was about a 10-year period where the two coolest things in the entire world were zombies and girls in bikinis. Those are both still really popular. Maybe they never fell out of popularity, but anyway, we have a game that features both of them. It's Oni Chanbara Z2 Chaos. If you don't know what Oni Chanbara is, you've been missing out. You play as these two girls clad in bikinis of varying skimpiness. <laughs> you can you can unlock new ones, so you can you can clothe them somewhat, or vice versa. <laughs> you're basically just running around areas that's similar to Devil May Cry, and you're hacking and slashing them, and I think maybe shooting them as well, and a little bit. And as you do, you get more and more covered in blood, and so does your sword. And there's a mechanic featured in this game where your sword gets so coated in blood that you can't attack with it anymore. It loses its sharpness, due to all the gore stuck on the sharp edge of the blade, and you have to press a button to sling the blood off. So you can't just go willy-nilly button pressing. You have to stop occasionally, make yourself vulnerable to zombie attack, and sling the blood off your sword. That's not a very highbrow idea for a game. <laughs> Sexy girls running around cutting apart zombies. But it's executed pretty well. <laughs> It plays really nicely. The characters are actually intriguing. There's a decent story, and the gameplay is just mindless fun. And sometimes that's all you need. I picked this up at GameStop on clearance when they were trying to like get rid of their extra stock. I paid, I don't know, 30 bucks for it for the collector's edition. I think it only came in a collector's edition, but I have not seen it since. Now, I did see it featured in a couple of videos recently, which makes me think that it's gaining traction. Once that happens, and once the YouTubers like me, not like me, bigger than me, <laughs> start mentioning games, you know what happens. The value just starts going up and up and up and up and up. I wish that wasn't the case, but I would feel like I was doing wrong if I didn't let you know about these games. You guys often tell me that you buy a lot of games that I mention, and here are some ones that I think you should all go out and buy <laughs> if you got the money and you're able to find them. Well, anyway, guys, there are 10 games on the PS4 that you probably missed that you definitely need to go pick up. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. I'd like to take this as an opportunity to thank the channel members and Patreon. You can see their names on the screen right now. The best way to help the channel is by watching the videos and liking and commenting. If you want to help a little bit more, you can become a channel member by going to the link in the description or going over to Patreon slash RNG Gamer and signing up. There's lots of cool stuff you can do, like getting your name at the end of the video or even picking a game for me to play. So thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you, and I'll catch you next time.